Hey everybody, my name is John Siskovich. I'm on a 52 acre farm brewery property here in Western Connecticut. We raise pasture based livestock and I also produce brewing ingredients for the beer that we make in a building that is behind the camera. Now, uh, I'm doing a series this week of my five struggles with the hop yard, the things that collectively over time just wear me down and make it very difficult. And yesterday we talked about the organization tying the knots up in the air, uh, plugging the clips in the ground and making sure that all these plants end up where they're supposed to be growing. Today we're going to talk about competition and weeding in this video. What I do about weeding, what my struggles are, what lessons I've learned, uh, what things I've tried, and I want to know what you guys do for those of you who grow hops. And if you're a gardener, uh, you'll be probably be able to weigh in on this as well. If not, you're just going to get some information about how I've weeded hops, successes and failures in the next five minutes. So the trick with weeding I found is getting ahead of it and staying ahead of it. And if you don't stay ahead of it, a little task becomes a huge task. And that's when you have too much competition, you have crop failure, um, you have too much pressure or the weeds just, you know, they're pulling <clears throat> nutrients out of the ground, competing with your hops. And when you pull that out and cast it aside, you're essentially taking the food away from the hops and throwing it into your rows or getting rid of it altogether. Now, um, we're gonna go over mulching the weeding techniques and spraying, and then my plans for the future after all those lessons learned. So down here on the ground, we have the plant. Uh, this hot plant uh, grows, it shoots up a whole bunch of shoots in the spring, uh, new fresh little buds. And what we're doing is hanging uh, a twine, a uh, trellising line down from the grid into the ground. And those shoots, once they grab onto that twine, that coir, they twine up the, uh, the rope there and uh, produce hops and great, that's how plants grow. What, what's difficult I find is that you, know, you don't have one central stalk to go around, you have a variety of these uh, vines that grow up in about one square foot to two square foot area. Now keeping that one square feet to two square feet weeded, not a big issue if you have 10 hop plants. With the people who are going to write in and be like, my five hot plants grow like crazy. That's great. I have a thousand of them and it is more difficult on at scale to hand weed all of this. I've tried mulching in the past and we're going to go over mulching right now. Uh, wood chips, uh, you have to put down super, super thick and uh, the wood will lock up nitrogen is one of the things that you're concerned about with wood chips. Uh, it can also adjust the acidity of your soil depending on the wood that you're putting down. It tends to be a little bit more acidic, uh, I believe. And uh, double check that uh, because I can't remember, because like wood ash has a pH of like 10, um, but I think the wood chips themselves might be more acidic. I'd, I'll have to double check that. Um, do your research before you make decisions based off of YouTube videos. The wood chips, uh, difficult to spread. You have to spread them by hand because I have poles uh, in, be in between the ends of my rows, so I can't just dump uh, tractor buckets full down the row. Uh, I have to bring a tractor down the middle and hand shovel all the wood chips onto the middle of the uh, rows where the hops are growing. And that's just a lot of manual labor for varied results. You know, you'll still, with wood chips that aren't traveled on and aren't uh, raked or kind of turned a little bit, uh, disturbed, you're still gonna get grasses that come up through, you're still gonna get some weeds that come up through, and as they break down over time, those plants are gonna find their way through the wood chips, so it's only good for a season or two before you have to keep reapplying. I've also tried hay down on the rows where you put thick pads of hay, like you get a square bale of hay and it breaks up into pads, you put the whole pad down, and that really snuffs out the weeds in between. And that way, even if, say, I have two plants this far apart, I can put a pad in between each one and minimize my weeding where I'm not weeding the whole row, I'm weeding this section, not this section, this section, not this section, and I kind of checkerboard it. Uh, that has varied success, but again, as the hay breaks down, <coughs> hay or straw, um, weeds can get through it. Uh, you'll have to reapply. You have to buy all that hay in uh, or straw to, to mulch it, and you have to go through, break them apart, and put them down. So the time you spent mulching you might as well spend weeding and then the weeds are gone. So I, I don't know that that's a perfect answer either. 
I have had friends who have tried plastic mulch and that you put down a thick plastic like 10 year mulch and uh, punch holes where the hops come through. And I found that with the cultivation hilling, uh, and for me, it would just be so hard to put it down because it's easier if all of this is dirt and you're starting with dirt and you put down the mulch later and then you punch your poles in, either offset or you know in between at intervals with the uh, plastic mulch uh, between the poles. Where uh, to do all that work, to try to get mulch, that plastic mulch down in my hop yard is just, would be so difficult to get all the edges underneath and then you get a strong wind or a storm and it starts to pick up and then you hit it with a lawnmower once or it gets snagged on something and then that plastic mulch shreds into a plastic nightmare very quickly. Uh, it can work really well for temporary vegetable farming. I've done that in the past, um, but for the permanent installation, I don't see plastic mulch as a good viable solution. Now when it gets down to sprays, uh, I don't use Roundup or glyphosate. We're an organically managed farm, even though we are not certified organic. Um, <clears throat> so the only thing I've done for sprays is I made a mixture, and I'll make another video about this, of uh, acetic acid, which is white vinegar at a 5% dilution, uh, Epsom salt or magnesium sulfate, is just Epsom salt, uh, and then um, dishwashing liquid, and the dishwashing liquid helps it stick. And that acid, salt, and dishwashing liquid combination uh, burns the ground, burns the plants that are, it works better on broadleaf stuff, uh, burns them, browns them, and beats them back with applications of that, uh, like the way uh, Roundup would do, just a little less effective because it's organic and it doesn't systemically kill it, it just kills uh, the above ground greenage. Uh, that works once the plants are high enough because you can see that there's no broad leaves on the bottom of the hot plants right now because we pruned them tomorrow's video um, so that it doesn't really damage the hop but it damages the weeds around them and that's a good way to suppress uh, weed damage but the problem I ran into there is that I tried to order the chemicals in bulk just get hundred percent acetic acid and dilute it to five percent myself instead of buying 300 gallons of white vinegar and the chemical company is being painstakingly slow with the process and my weeds are growing back while I wait on that and now I'm going to have to weed it again because the really big stuff doesn't do well with that spray. It, it works better on younger, more fragile plants. Um, yeah, so we went over mulching, sprays, and other than that, it's just a lot of hand weeding and I can do a, a video on hand weeding because this one's getting long. Um, I have a couple tools that I fashioned and uh, they work pretty well. Uh, but it's time down on your knees, we call it praying to the hop gods, and that you spend an hour a day hand weeding. We have about an acre hop yard here, and it's a lot to manage, that's a lot to pull up uh, by hand. So now you know the things that I've tried. Uh, I have, uh, I've tried the mulch, I've tried wood chips, and I've tried hay. Uh, plastic I steered away from because I couldn't see logistically uh, getting it on in an effective manner and having it work long term. Uh, I've done uh, so much hand weeding, I like I, my hands. Um, so much time on my knees and my hands and as I get a little older, I'm not that old, but as I get older, uh, I am less thrilled with the idea of hand weeding. Um, uh, and I try my organic weed spray. Uh, I've tried Avengers weed spray, which is a citric acid, which works the same way as that, um, the Epsom salt, acetic acid, and uh, dishwashing liquid. Um, it's just cheaper uh, to go the DIY route than it is to have the official uh, official product. So now I want to know your feedback, what you guys think of weeding hop yard. This video got a little long as I explained things, but um, and it's very detailed and these are not viral videos, but as there are more people who watch my videos who get into growing hops, I want you guys to see the series, to see the five things that I'm struggling with. Yesterday organization, today weeding, and tomorrow we're going to go pruning the bottom of the plants um, to, and I'll explain why we do that and all whatever jazz. So. I would caution, before you start a hop yard, really do your homework. Read all the University of Vermont crop and soil hop page. Um, whenever anybody asks me for hop advice, and I'm gonna put this link on the bottom of every single video, uh, I point them to the UVM page for growing in the Northeast. Uh, I struggle with it and I'm not the best. I know all the ways to fail, but not a lot of ways to succeed, and that is why I'm creating these videos so that we can all figure it out. Anyways, without me filling any more words in your time, uh, hope you have an awesome day, and until the next video, I will see you out in the hop yard. Mm -hmm.